Hello, my beautiful and powerful friends. This is going to be a follow-on video, a call to action from the last video that I did that talked about it's time for the hidden light to be revealed. And many of you, in that video, I talked about that it is not time to sit back and simply allow our consciousness, our light work to do its work for itself. We must, as humans, spiritual beings incarnate in human form here in the real world to get into action, not simply to trust and rely on the energies of consciousness, of light, of protection, all that stuff that is true in the higher dimensions. We are now facing a very powerful battle in the real world, in the third dimension. Now, I do a lot of channeling off camera and in the last week, I have been doing even more because we are in the battle of all battles right now in terms of the transition, right? The transition out of the construct and matrix energies into new earth energies. Now, I'm going to try to speak in very real and practical terms. What does this mean? We are moving from a world that is based in ego, greed, war, destruction, manipulation and into a world where we will live in community with loving hearts, with peace, with abundance, with care for others, um, other beings all across the planet. We are going to be, um, we are going to be living in that type of a world. Nobody wants to live in a world that is what is playing out now. War, destruction, um, money, greed, manipulation, dark. And so we are moving into that now, but the transition is what we are going through right now. I have been shown many times the analogy of labor, right? Labor has begun to birth the new way of being on earth, the new earth, the new consciousness. But man, that's a process that's gonna take a while and we're not in control of it, okay? It's going to happen. There's going to be a new life on the other side of this, but it is a painful, difficult, and um, very challenging process, I will tell you. But it's, it's worth it in the end. I promise that, just like giving birth, right? But this is where we're at in the world. So what does this mean? This means that right now, guys, many of you have awoken to your spiritual path, to understanding the higher consciousness concepts of light, of being in your power, being in your light, being balanced in your, your masculine, feminine essences and, and, and um, seeing things from higher perspective and understanding the lessons and not judging and all that good stuff, right? But we now need to get into action. And I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna give you guys a real life story from my own life that I think is the best example of all the stuff that's been coming through in my channeling recently, because I think stories are the best way to teach. And this is how you're gonna get to understand what I mean when, it's, when, when I say to get into action with showing the light, with being the light. What does that mean? Many of you asked on my last video, great, I get it, I wanna get into action, but what can I do? So I'm gonna give you that in a moment here in the st after the story, which is gonna illustrate this. But I want you guys to understand that this is not just an average everyday life right now where we can do our spiritual work and be in our abundance and bliss and happiness and balance. We are all to be going to task right now. Um, this is where we are supposed to be very vigilant because I will tell you that the dark, and I'm going to use the word, the terms light and dark, I'm not assigning labels to anything or anybody or any group or any whatever, light and dark because this really what it is what it what is going on we must elevate above the labels we must elevate above the, the what's happening in the real world see things from the higher perspective and also understand the magnitude of what is happening so what is happening right now is every single person on the planet is being tested in a major way the dark is attacking in any which way it can. For some of you in your day-to-day -day lives, 
It's little nuisance things. It's things that are frustrating. It's things that get at your Achilles heel. We all have Achilles heels in our lives, right? We have those life lessons that we came here to incarnate, to learn and grow through that keep repeating, that keep coming up. Yes, even if we've done all the healing on it, we have what it, it, we all have a correction, a soul correction in every lifetime. And even if we have learned it and healed through it, it's still our Achilles heel. So when it gets touched and when it gets hit, it still freaking hurts. It doesn't mean that it causes us to go into, you know, a spiral of oblivion and negativity, but it does still hurt. And so every single person right now on the planet in some form or another is likely being tested in some part of their lives. Um, and it is important when this is happening that you do not turn around and judge yourself where it's like, wow, what am I doing wrong? Am I not healed enough? Did I not, why am I, spirit, why am I manifesting this outward experience? I, I thought I'm like, where, where's, the, where's the justice? Where's the karmic justice for all the work I've done on myself? Do not fall into that trap of doubting yourself and thinking that you are somehow to blame. The dark is amping up that dial so much right now that it's trying to find any which way to enter into your life that it can because that is what it does and so what does this mean we have to be vigilant this means that yes while we are spiritual beings here and we are doing our work and there is a form of when we're in our light there is protection however we cannot get complacent we cannot drop our guard at any time right now and I know this may sound extreme and I know this may sound dramatic, but it's intended to make an impact because yes, it is that big of a deal. This is what is happening now. We cannot drop our guard at any time and assume that we are finally through the, the battle or through the test. And I'm going to give you the example from my life here again in a moment. But I do want to do the setup first so that the story makes even more sense for you. And this does not mean, okay, one of the things that people always uh, per perpetuate in the spiritual community, which can be very damaging to a lot of people, is, well, if you're in your light or you're in your consciousness, nothing will touch you. It's fine. You're safe. And if something's happening to you, it's because of you, right? Or because you're putting out a vibe and it's, you're manifesting it, right? In the higher dimensions, in theory, yeah, that's true. But we're living in the real world here. So what does this mean? This means that we must understand that in the real world, energy sometimes and consciousness sometimes is not enough. There are things we must do in the physical realm to stop the process from happening. Um, you know, it's not enough to simply do energy work or grid work. We have to do things in the physical realm. So I'm going to give, or maybe I'll do another video on this other story. I've got like three huge stories I want to tell you, and I don't want this video to be too long. So the story I want to share with you is a way that the dark works to really, to really wear down the strongest and strongest of souls. Those people that are doing the work, that have been doing the work. Many of you are even in mission work. Um serving the planet in some capacity, living from this energy. So I have a situation where many of you know I was in transition for almost two years, leaving California and moving moving to Florida. And um, I was in transition for longer than I expected to be because I was in the process of building a home. And that process took more than double the amount of time, almost triple the amount of time I was told originally. Um, and whatever, it is what it is. Um, and so fine. And I had a lot of trials and tribulations during that process, but finally I moved, got into the home. And when, when you get into the home, you can and you're at the whole, everyone's building, right? New homes. You're like, I don't know what's going to be next door to me. I don't know what my neighbors are going to be doing. Is there going to be, you know, and granted in, you know, where we live here, just like what in California, like everyone's living on top of each other, you know, I shouldn't say everybody and where I'm living, everyone's living on top of each other. Like our homes are so close. You could almost touch, but, um, and there's plenty of other places in Florida where there's lots of space, which kind of makes me wonder if I should have done something like that, but that's okay. 
um, I digress from the story. So when you're building it, I was going through all these trials and tribulations and I'm like, why is my home taking three times longer than my other neighbors, right? And I'm like, what is spirit teaching me? What am I supposed to learn? What am I meant to see through this? So whatever. So I got through that whole process, finally moved into the home and I was like, great. I went through so much crap during the process compared to my other neighbors. I mean, everyone deals with crap, right? But I had a purport, extra purport, like a bigger proportion of the crap. And as I say this, one of the crap reasons is actually standing right there and I'm looking at him right now. I'll tell you what that is in a second. But of course, while I'm recording this video about the situation, there they are. Okay. <laughs> All right. So where was I? Um, so I had, a, I had a disproportionate amount of crap during the building process. But whatever. So finally I get into the home and I'm like, great. I had all that. I got all that over with. Now that I'm in the house, I can rest and relax, right? Great. Whew, thank God I'm here. Well, I've had a lot of crap with the home even since I've moved in. A lot of stuff with the construction and all sorts of crazy stuff. But I'm going to focus this on the one situation that is going to illustrate it all. So next door to me, um, there's a neighbor who closed on the house like I don't know maybe a month or two after me and they didn't build a pool so right next to me I'm like oh I have this beautiful grassy area it's so pretty right because I look out my main living area looks out in that direction I'm like oh how nice I have nice green grass I have a nice view and um so I was like wow this is awesome because most people build pools here in Florida because it's so freaking hot and why the heck not? We live like in vacation tropical paradise. Why wouldn't you build a pool? But I was like, wow, this is so great. I have like no pool next door to me. It's so pretty. Because other people put the cage around the pool and whatever. And, and they look nice, fine. But I was glad to have the grass. Well, then I find out, I don't know, a couple months later, I meet my neighbor who doesn't live here full time. And they're going to put in a pool. And I'm like, okay, so now I'm going to be living in a construction zone. Whereas I kind of lived in a construction zone for the two months when I first moved in because their house wasn't done yet. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Once it's done. So finally the construction was over and I had beautiful green grass. It was like, finally there was a sense of peace. There was no more construction equipment. There was no more noise. There was no more dust. There was no more, you know, men walking around my house. Like within a few feet of my windows, like all the time. So it was good. It was really good. But then I was like, great. All right, I'm going to be in a construction zone. And when I found out he was going to be building the pool, I went around the neighborhood and I looked because I was like, obviously there's pool equipment that comes with the pool. But the way that his house is built is in the neighborhood. All of the homes on the garage side of the home, there's one side of the house that has the garage that's where they put all of the ugly stuff, right? The pool equipment, the, the air conditioning units, the gas lines. It's like there's that one ugly part of the house that all that crap goes on on the exterior. And then there's the one nice side of the house that's kind of clean and pretty in between the homes. So I was like, okay, this is even amazing. So he's building a pool, but at least it's... Um, And thank God the pool equipment's going to go on the other side because I actually, the way my home is configured right within feet of me right here is my outside sitting area, which is under a covered lanai. And it's literally less than 10 feet from my neighbor's home where it begins. So it's really close, right? But I was like, awesome, because this is going to be a pretty side of the wall. I have my living room, I have my office, and they all look out onto like this nice blank wall of the neighbor's house so it's not ugly right and this is my main living area so I was like okay that's fine so sure enough you know great I'm gonna be living in a construction zone but oh well so they break ground for this pool and turns out I see the pool builder like putting a line within three feet of my like on the on the grass within three feet of where I sit when I sit outside in my little outdoor area and I'm like, what the heck is he doing? And it looked like he was going to put like a slab of cement there for the pool equipment. And I was like, I called the homeowner who doesn't live here. And I said, hey, do you know why the guy's putting it over here? And he goes, no. He goes, we signed, we agreed that, um, no, this plans we signed off on was the pool equipment was going to go on the other side, meaning far away from me. Because on the other side of their home, the other neighbor is far enough away and they're on an easement. 
and they don't even have any windows and their, their sitting area and their pool area is not even gonna be affected. So basically, the guy, if my neighbor puts it on the other side, nobody's bothered. It's perfect and it's where it's supposed to be because that's where it is on every other house in the neighborhood. So he's like, no, 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 I don't know what's going on. Long story short, we go through this whole thing. I know something shady is going on. I make, you know, I have my entire mission of my life is understanding where darkness lives, how manipulation works, and I can sniff out deceit. So sure enough, something's going on. Somebody screwed up somewhere, and the plans that got approved were to put it over here. Even though it should be on the other side, the builder was like, well, the county count approved it, and it was six months ago, and blah, blah, blah. And so whatever. The point is, we went through this whole thing, got a lot of people involved. I helped to, you know, I was like this pool builder who's known to be shady, by the way, because other neighbors have had very, like, he, anyway, so I know he's shady, which I can tell from this experience, trying to kind of screw my neighbors. I was like trying to help my neighbors out, letting them know like, hey, he's putting something in you did not approve of. You did not contract to have it over here. Plus it's gonna really impact me negatively. So then we go through this whole thing, get the HOA involved, and sure enough, then it's resolved. And I was like, oh, thank God. Thank God I did the right thing. I shone the light, right? I'm shining the light on deception and manipulation, which is what was going on. And I helped my neighbor out by letting them know because the neighbor didn't want to put it next to me. They didn't want to upset me. They don't even, they're not even going to live here full time, right? They're only going to be here a, couple, you know, a little bit on vacations because they live somewhere else in the country. So it's not even like this is their full time home. But it's my full-time home. So, so we all wanted it on the other side, right? So my job as the person to shine the light on deception was to shine a big freaking spotlight on the truth, which is, hey, this can be put on the other side. Your pool builder's telling you you can't. And I promise you, I'm giving you all these details because the details really matter, you know? And again... This is a microcosm of what the dark does to everybody in whatever circumstance it is for you, okay? So there's a purpose for all this detail because it really does demonstrate beautifully the point I'm trying to make. So I'm shining the light on the truth. And then it turns out I hear from the HOA and the the HOA sends a letter like, no, it's all set. We're approving it on the other side. And I was like, yay, I did my light work. I helped fix the situation for everybody. Um, I'm really selfishly glad because it really was going to affect my life very negatively when the, from the standpoint of noise, right? The noise level where I'm going to try to sit and relax and also where I work. I freaking record healing meditations for a living and videos and I don't want loud pool equipment within, with, like literally, there's a, about seven feet from where I'm sitting right now is my window for my living room. Anyway, I'll sell that in a second. So, okay, so I, this was back around Labor Day. So like around mid-September, I was like, oh, thank God, it's taken care of. I fought the battle. I was under, I, I didn't sleep very well from the stress of all this for a while because I could tell there was manipulation going on. I could tell the neighbor was kind of falling for it and was kind of being manipulated because he wasn't a very strong, he wasn't very strong, right? Nice person, but not very strong. If it was one of my New York neighbors, oh my God, that guy would have like ripped the builder a new a-hole and said, I'm not paying for this. You're delivering what I contracted. Well, I'm not doing that to my neighbor. You're gonna pay to make all the changes that you screwed up on, and I'm not paying you an extra dime to fix your mess up. That's what my New York neighbor would have done. My New York neighbors, I have many of them. They're awesome, I love New York people. It kind of reminds me of Boston. So, okay. So, here's a person who is being manipulated that I'm trying to shine the light to help him see he's being manipulated, but also to help myself, of course. So back in like middle of September, I was like, oh my God, yes. And so now when I look out onto a pile of dirt and concrete and have workers out there, which hasn't happened for like a month, they've been not doing anything, but I'm living in a construction zone anyway. I'm now not looking at it with, oh, I'm so stressed. 
I want to shine my light. I mean, I kind of did all this energetic work around it too. I mean, I went out and I saged. I did all this other stuff to help with the energies to make sure that the light wins, right? <laughs> so, okay, so then, so for about a month, um, here I am like, oh, I'm so glad I won that battle. Phew, I made it through that battle. About 10 days ago, I get a phone call, like at nine o'clock at night on a Thursday from the neighbor, basically telling me that he hasn't heard from anybody, the, the county and the builder and the HOA, they haven't, da, 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 da. Like he's basically being manipulated by the pool builder because the only person benefiting from this situation is the pool builder. He's making more money. He's charging my neighbor more money on every delay. If he has to adjust the plan to accommodate making it not as bad for the neighbor because it is gonna be next to her, he's charging my neighbor. So the pool builder is the only one winning in this situation and maybe the county people that are getting greased, right? We know that happens. <laughs> I talked to my brother yesterday um, about this and he was just like, oh yeah, he goes, I used to see it happen all the time in Miami and New York. He's like the county and the builders and they're all in, you know, they all grease each other's palms, which we know happens, right? That's the dark. Anyway, this story is going on way longer than I thought, but again, the details matter. So I get the call from the neighbor. All of a sudden, he's like, you know, I'm getting told this, we're gonna have to put it there. If we have to put it there, you know, what if we move it down a few feet? And I go, even if you move it a few feet, it's still gonna be within, instead of being three feet from where I sit, it's only gonna be six feet from where I sit. The noise is still gonna be the same. It's not like he's putting it 30 feet away and the noise would be different. It's not gonna make a difference to my quality of life, right? And you know, and you know, it's right next to my office windows, which means now I have to always keep my windows shut. That sucks, cause kinda like fresh air, kinda why I live in a tropical climate, I'd like to have the windows open, but anyway. So he calls me and tells me this, and I go, something's not right. You're, what you're telling me does not add up. So either he's lying to me or the, whatever, doesn't matter. Something's not adding up. And I told him, I go, I'm gonna talk to the head of the HOA tomorrow, and we're gonna clear this up tomorrow. Wouldn't you know it? Couldn't talk to the HOA guy the next day. He was not in the office. And then there was a weekend. Monday morning, 7 a.m., the builder, after not being here for a month, suddenly is out there with five guys, three huge pieces of equipment, digging, 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 all the plumbing to put the frickin' pool equipment right here. Mysteriously, after four weeks of literally nobody being on that property at all, doing nothing, it's like they, they poured the pool and then they sat there for a month with not one visit. And mysteriously the next day, the pool builders there like hustling. They work so freaking fast. They should, ha if they've worked that fast every day, this pool will be done in a week. So the point is the builder knew what the hell was going on. He knew he was about to get caught doing the shady stuff. So he was going to do it anyway and then act, oops, sorry, it's already done. Right? So I didn't, I was stressed about this. And finally I figured it out. It turns out, yes, it can still be done on the other side. And I basically told my neighbor very clearly after this weekend of stressing about it because I couldn't do anything about it over the weekend because everyone's closed. I told my neighbor, I go, this is breach of contract. He's delivering a pool you did not agree to. It's really that simple. And the county, the builder, the HOA, both the, all of us are saying that it's possible to put it on the side you originally wanted. It's not like it's not possible. In fact, his air conditioning unit is already on that other side. This pool equipment is not doing anything differently on the easement. So the point is, I was very direct. I shone my light on it, right? I was so clear with my neighbor. Instead, I did it in writing where I was like, listen, you shouldn't be paying for more of this. He should fix it. I did, said all the stuff I needed to say. The details of what I said don't really matter. I just shone all the light and I spoke very directly, which is what the light does. The light is direct and doesn't kind of sugarcoat things, right? It's like, here's the truth, lays it all out there. So I did that. That's what I am doing about putting the light into action 
is if my neighbor is being manipulated or being tugged on emotionally or he's not being honest with me or not telling me half the story and I'm only going on what I know, I'm shining the light on what I know to be the truth. Whether it's the actual truth or not, I don't know. Seems to be the truth. But the point is, I shine the light on it. And then I'm like, okay, good. I spoke my truth. He now knows once and for all that he's being manipulated by this pullback. And it's going to, it, it's gonna, light's going to do what it's going to do. So I don't hear anything all week. <laughs> I don't hear anything all week, but I was feeling pretty good because I, I was, you know, getting my guidance from spirit about, you know, the light's going to do its thing. Let the light do the, do the work right now. You've done everything you can. You went into action, but now like you're not, you can't do anything else. So just relax, let the, let the light work its magic. So I get a phone call Friday at like 4.45 in the afternoon from my neighbor. And I didn't pick it up because I was like, all right, if it's bad news, I'm not going to spend another weekend of not sleeping, stressing about this and composing letters in my head of what I want to say to him, right? So I didn't listen to the message. <laughs> and then he texts me right away because he didn't, he left a message, but then he texts me based and I saw the beginning of the text. I was like, Oh no, no, I don't want to see it. No, nope. I'm going to put a boundary up right now because there's nothing to be done. There's nothing to be done until Monday. If there's even anything that can be done, but I'm hoping it's good news. I'm hoping finally the neighbor's like, yeah, I finally talked to him. We're going to put it over there. Don't worry about it. Sorry for the problem. Sorry for the hassle. So I didn't listen to it. And then we had the eclipse on Saturday. And I have to tell you, that boundary I put up and that almost like the letting go of, I don't need to know, I can't do anything else, was really good for me over the weekend. And I just came to peace with the situation where I said to myself, all right, you know what? I've done my part to share the light. Whether I win this battle of the light and dark, I don't know. It's not up to me. But I've done my part. And I was very much in self-preservation mode over the weekend because it's one of those things where there comes a point where when there's a problem, we want to fix it. When there's an attack, we want to fix it. This kind of is like an attack, right? Again, this is a parable story to teach. This is an attack on my safe space, right? Where else is that happening in the world, okay? Again, not an accident. This is happening now so that this can be taught. So I made this choice to preserve my energy because all it was gonna do is exhaust me. I wasn't gonna be able to do anything else than I did. So sure enough, I wake up Monday morning. I still probably wasn't gonna live, and I texted my, my neighbor, by the way, on Friday, and I said, hey, I see you've called me, I see you've left me a text message, but, um, and I'm, I'm hoping it's great news, but on the off chance it's not, I'm just letting you know I'm not going to listen to it or respond to it or respond to you until Monday, just because I can't have what happened last night. I basically said, I'm well, just letting them know in courtesy, like, hey, I'm not ignoring you. I just, I cannot, for my own self-preservation, hear any bad news on another freaking Friday and have to deal with it all weekend. So I wasn't even sure if I was still going to listen, but I didn't even have to listen because sure enough, Monday morning, the pool builder's back out there again, building, doing all this stuff. They're putting all the stuff. I basically lost the battle, right? The light lost the battle. And how did the light lose the battle? The light lost the battle because the free will choice of the neighbor was to not stand up to the manipulation and to do what's right. Because what is right is to call the pool builder on the BS, to fix the wrong that was done, to do the right thing for the neighbor that all of us wanted, you know? And so the way that the light, the way that the action I took, the light didn't win because the free will decision of my neighbor was not to stand up to the darkness. He didn't have the power within himself to do the right thing because he decided for himself, which is his free will choice to decide, um, to decide 
I don't want to delay this pool any longer. I don't want to deal with these back and forth phone calls any longer with the county, the builder, the HOA, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to spend more money because I can't stand up to the pool builder to tell him I'm not paying any more money for your screw up. Wasn't, wasn't strong enough to do that. And so in that, he chose the easy route for himself, which is his free will choice. He doesn't owe me anything, right? It's his property. He can do what he wants. But it's not what he ultimately wanted in the first place. It's not what he wanted in the first place. They were so relieved and happy when we figured out that they could do it on the side they originally wanted it. They were so happy, legitimately. We were all celebrating. And so, again, this long ass story is here's what I wanted to share. The action I took was to shine the light on it. And there's the last piece of the story, which is the final piece that I think is almost the most important part. So I lose the battle, right? I'm sure my neighbor's not psyched that it's going to go over here. I'm not psyched about it, but he's choosing it. So what I could do, because this is going to be a neighborly situation, is I could have chosen to just sit back and say, you know what? I lost. Sucks for me. But what can I do now? And just let it be. And just sit there, let it be, be like, oh my, I see the higher perspective. I see my neighbor wasn't strong enough. I see he do, did what he did for selfish reasons. I get it. I mean, I don't see him putting his pool equipment in his little sitting area, which happens to be in the middle of his back, in the back of his house, not on the side. Mine's on the side. His is in the middle. I don't see him putting his pool equipment within three feet of where he's sitting in his house, but it's fine to put it near mine. But anyway, that's my point, right? It's, 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 um, Sucks for me. <laughs> so, in that battle of the light and the dark and me shining the light, a lot of people would stop right there and be like, well, I did my best. I lost this one, but I did my light work. Well, guess what? My light work wasn't done yet. My light work was not done. Because for me, the easy route would have been to keep my mouth shut to keep the peace between me and my neighbor. But there was something deep within me that spirit wouldn't let me. They're like, no, no, Erica, you've got to see it through. You've got to see it through. Yes, you lost this one, but you have to see it through. And what spirit meant by seeing it through is to once and for all shine the light human to human to my neighbor. And what that involved was I kind of took a few, you know, took a couple days, but I wrote a message to my neighbor where I basically communicated very clearly the truth, which is, listen, this is a permanent decision that's going to affect me negatively. And you, you know, you made your decision and I have to live with it. And basically, but like, and I basically called him on the fact that this is a choice that you made. Because here's what he was doing. He, in his text messages and his communication to me, was acting like it wasn't his decision. Like there was nothing he could do. That, oh, well, because I haven't heard, we're just going to continue with the construction as is. And we're really sorry. We're going to hope it's going to get done as fast as possible. And I was like, uh-uh, you're not getting away with that crap. You're not getting away with acting like you're not, like he wasn't taking accountability, right? And that was that final piece that was not easy for me to do from the standpoint of like, oh, you know what? He already thinks I'm probably a pain in the ass. Whatever. I don't care. I was trying to help him. I was trying to help me. And I wrote this in that text. I go, I was advocating for both of us. You're not even here. If I didn't even bring this to your attention, he would have built this and you wouldn't have had no clue because you're not even here to watch him. So the, the final piece of it for, was for me to shine the light on his lack of accountability and just leave it at that. So I sent the message and it was very clear. It wasn't like now, it, you know, it was very much clear, direct and to the point. 
and that's it. And now my light work is done there. My action on the light work is done because what a lot of people end up doing in that situation is they would rather keep the peace or not cause trouble by keeping their mouth shut. But when someone is not being of their strongest person, right? And he and they're 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 not taking accountability. We have to shine a light on that. What they do with it is up to them. But I and I said this to my brother yesterday when I was talking about this. I was like he had just said to me in the text message or to my face, you know what, Erica, we don't want it over there. I know you don't want it over there, but quite frankly, it's exhausting me and we're just going to do it. We're really sorry, um, but we're going to keep it over there. It's going to take too, ma too many more months or I'm not going to, I don't want to ruffle the, I don't want to take this guy to court. I don't want to get a new pool builder, whatever the reason, but I am choosing to do this and I'm really sorry. If he had just done that, that would have been it, right? I would have been like, okay, I can respect that. I can respect owning it, right? That And that doesn't create bad karma, right? When we don't take accountability, and I've done videos about this, where we don't take accountability is when we create bad karma for ourselves. So unfortunately, there's gonna be some stuff going on for this guy that is gonna be related. I don't know what it is, it's not up to me, it's up to the universe, right? But I hope that by me giving you this painstaking detail on this situation, that you can see how our light work can often be perceived as your freaking pain in the ass. Because I don't let myself get away with fooling myself this guy is fooling himself. This guy is manipulating himself or he's being manipulated or a combination of all three, right? We cannot allow that kind of stuff to go on any longer. So again, this is a relatively small and insignificant situation compared to a lot of other things that are going on. But that is what takes the emotion out of it, right? It makes it a lot more clear, which is why I took all this time to share with you this situation. So when we think we've won a battle, guess what, guys? That's how the dart gets you. I dropped my guard. I was like, yay, having my little party. Like, oh, I don't have to worry about the pool equipment. This is great. I, I, you know, I fought it and I brought the light to it. And oh my gosh, I'm so happy. My neighbor's happy. I'm happy. Yay. The dark sitting in the back like this, like, uh-huh, uh -huh. see, we're letting her think. And what I should have done is remained vigilant and remembering that just because I've been told that I'm winning this or that this is, this is what's happening, I have to still hold the vigilance and the light. Oh my gosh, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Oh, I just faked myself out. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> I didn't sneeze. I hate that, I hate that. Just freaking let me sneeze. Um, so, so the vigilance is to understand that at any moment, the dark can hit us. Because had I kind of had that mentality, even though I had the temporary win that I thought was the final win, I would have still been like, all right, well, sounds good for now, but we'll just see, right? And still hold the light. Because then when I got the phone call from the neighbor, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have knocked me off my rocker the way that it did. I would have been like, mm -hmm, see, I knew it. Okay. So I would have, it wouldn't have been good, but I, it wouldn't have like had the, I wouldn't have had a weekend of sleepless nights. Let's just put it that way. That's what I'm talking about. So celebrate the wins but be vigilant on the lookout and just being like, okay, there's a win. Maybe it's the end result, maybe it's not, 
but that is how the darkness works. That's why when there is suddenly peace after a quote unquote threat, I am always like, uh uh, be careful. This is right when they're going to hit you, right when you're down, or when you just when you let down your guard. Know this is how it works, and you can see it in your own life, you can see it in the world events. And so, what we must do is understand that this is going on. The strongest of the strong, the dark is everywhere. There's no safe zone, right? We let down our guards when we get into our homes. We let down our guards around certain people. And again, this isn't about being paranoid and whatever. This is about being vigilant. There's a difference between thinking negatively, being paranoid, thinking everything's bad. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about it really is that intense right now. And this is a time for us to be the warriors. This is for a time for us to be the soldiers in our lives. I said yesterday in my channeling, this is a time for your inner masculine to, to, to be on guard 24-7. That personal masculine essence is supposed to be protective 24-7. On war, watch, on guard. Don't take a little breather and a, and, a, and a rest and go like eat bonbons and play with the divine feminine for a while. Like, I mean, I'm being facetious in a way, but the energy needs to stay vigilant within all of us, okay? So many people that get into their unity consciousness are in unity consciousness, which is great, but we're living in the real world. And the real world is the dark wants to knock you down. They want to get you off. They did it to me just recently in this situation. And I learned from it so that I can also share it with you as a great example, albeit a long example, a great example of all the nuances, right? There's a lot of nuances in that long ass story a lot of intricacies, a lot of subtleties. And I have been basically like, I almost at one point put on my website, my title is Shadow Tamer because I have done so much work with people's shadows and unconscious behaviors for almost 20 years. So I know how this can play out. Never thought I would be that person. I never thought that would be an area of my work, but it is for this reason, because I am meant to show you guys. Before I couldn't share a lot of this info, but now there's no more time to waste. I need to get this information out. I'm also um, gonna continue to do more of this because there's another two separate pieces to this. Two other, two other important messages that came through in channel that I'm gonna do in other videos. But I truly hope that this example is is um, reminding you of what we all need to be doing right now. Yes, doing what we can to shine the light. And guess what? People are so uncomfortable with the truth and the mirror held up to them. I did it in a kind way, but I did it in a direct way. Don't get me wrong. I did it in a very direct... There was no pussyfooting around that text I sent him. Just very direct. And I don't, I, he probably is not going to like it. He's probably going to turn it against me. She's a, she's a whatever. She's this, whatever. Okay. But I, I literally like almost cost and sacrificed a copacetic, friendly neighborhood relationship for the sake of the light. Some of you may criticize me for that. I don't quite give a crap. That's what I did. And if I have to sit here and every time I see them be like, all right, I know who you are. I know my truth. I know the truth. You enjoy your pool. <laughs> you enjoy your pool. I'll make friends with your pool equipment here. I'll figure out a way to live with it, right? But, you know, who knows? Down the road, I'm sure knowing me, um, things will work out. But I had to follow through on my piece of it. Hold him accountable by speaking the truth so that he could not even ma manipulate himself and fool himself and live in the illusion that somehow this isn't his fault. Well, it is. And in fact, I ended the text with, this is your free will choice. <laughs> so he probably hates me now. Oh, well, you know, he's not gonna hate me. We've, we've had lots of conversations. He might not like me right now because I spoke truth. 
nobody likes to be called on when they are acting manipulatively, right? Never, ever, ever, ever. But we cannot shy away from that now. We do it kindly, but we do it firmly. We don't do it mean, we don't hit below the belt. We just speak the truth and shine the light. So my friends, I appreciate each and every one of you. Each and every one of you are here listening to this, hopefully anchoring more of this information and understanding into your field and into your day-to-day -day lives. So I thank you, I appreciate you, and I send you so much love, my powerful, beautiful friends. Until next time, bye.